Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of Him. Thank you for coming, and um, I love reading these words to you guys so that you can get an understanding that as you and I grow, God has given us everything Uh, As you and I apply the word of God in our life, it is designed, as the scripture says, to do certain things. And one of the things is to save the soul. And as we are studying, we're going to look today about entering into God's rest. I had promised that um, previously in the week that I would cover this topic about the rest of God. And I want to talk to you. It's going to be a lot of information, so I want you guys to buckle up a little, a little and then we'll go from there. We're going to take our text out of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 10. For the one who has entered God's rest has also rested from his own work, just as God rested from his own work. And so we're going to take a look at what does that mean to enter into God's rest because he invites you and I to get there. And I actually believe when we get to that space, uh, God's rest is where we get our victory. I actually believe that that's where we are called to be. And um, we're going to go through that and take a look at some of the things that we gain as we are in that space that we call the rest of God. So let's take a look and see what Jesus, what actually God was doing um, that caused him to um, to rest. We know that we see that terminology first uh, written in the book of Genesis. In, in Genesis chapter 2, verses uh, 2, I believe it says that, and the seventh day God ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. And so you and I are called to do the same. And so we're going to talk about how do we get there. But let's take a look at C before um, God rested. He was very busy, if you will. And uh, there's, if you look into the scripture, you'll see, man, that God was absolutely, very truly, honestly busy. He's been a busy God for a long time. And so before he created the heaven and the earth, where he brought time into existence, uh, the continuum of space and time, when he brought that into existence, he was outside of that, meaning that he was living in the space of eternity. And so Uh, But he introduced time to us. And timing is very important to God. Uh, That's one of the things I've learned to value time as I get older. But young people don't know how to value time. The Bible tells us, it says that the psalmist says, teach me um, to about timing so I can appreciate my life and know when I'm about to die. And so um, you and I, God, the Bible tells us he always works in the fullness of time. And so he introduced time to us in Genesis and um, the space continuum and time continuum. And so we're going to talk about that in relation to all of these things. And so just buckle up for a little while and we'll take a peek at some of the things that God did and before time. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, it says, For he chose uh, us in him before the foundation of the earth, uh, before the foundation of the world, um, holy and blameless in his presence. In love for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight in love even before he made the world. So we know that God was doing and busy with us before even the world was created. We know that in um, Peter 1st 20, 20, he talks about uh, knowing you and I before the foundation of the earth. Psalm is full of stuff like that. Um, the prophets talked about God uh, uh, knowing us before when we, before we even hit the womb. It says that um, he knew us before that. He knew us before we formed. Um, it tells us in uh, 1 Peter 1.20, He was known before the foundation of the world, but was not revealed in the last time. For our sake, he was, but it was revealed in the last time. So, Again, Jesus Christ was also in the beginning before the foundation of the earth. There was some planning going on. The planning was the plan of redemption. And uh, Jesus Christ uh, stand up and said, I am going to be the one that will fulfill it. I'll be that sacrifice. And then after God uh, said he was going to make a man in, in his image, after they've made all these decisions, 
he does something. He says, I'm going to, we're going to make this man in our image and our likeness. And um, I believe that the man was a part of, he was creating with God because he had to be inside of God and he was not released until after everything was done. So man in his original state was one that walked by faith, powerful stuff. And so uh, when he began to name the animals and all those things, Adam, uh, that man walked by faith until he was tempted and when he was tempted, he fell. And because of uh, he fell, the Bible tells us that you shall surely die. And so outside of faith, you shall surely die. And so we see then that faith becomes very important because we see that that first Adam, he failed this test. The second or the last Adam, the Bible tells us, he did not. And his the location of the first test was in a garden. The location of the second Adam tested was in a wilderness. And it's really funny that you'd have those two similarity that the garden has become a wilderness, if you will. And so we see that um, uh, in that second temptation, Christ was able to become victorious and began to actually uh, implement the plans that God had done and, and they had uh, uh, thought up before the foundation of the earth. So we see that then they made this plan, they had their business plan, let us make man. And so because of all of these things, and I've told you the principles to decide a thing, and once you have decided a thing, then you will decree the thing. So we know that God had decided that he wanted to have man on to come into the, the uh, this dimension that he was creating for him within the earth. And so based on what he had decided, he began to then decree, let there be light, let there... What happened was that the earth was damaged from a rebellion that took place with Lucifer and his angels. Lucifer and his angels were cast out of the heavens. They began to propel towards the earth and they crashed into the earth, caused craters, they caused all kinds of stuff. Um that began to uh, damage the earth and put that earth in the first ice age. I believe that's what happened. There's lots of evidence towards that, and I actually did a study on that. So the reason why I'm taking all this time, guys, is the reason to go into the rest. I want to paint this full picture so you can get an understanding that you and I need to walk into this space just like God. So he then decree what he decided, and he began to create or recreate. He didn't create. He began to recreate and reconstruct the earth after it was damaged. And then he began to create a few things that was not there before. If you read the scriptures, you will see. And then he said, let's make man in our own name. So he didn't create man. He made man. And then after he made and fashioned man in his image, the image was the body uh, meaning that he had a face, he has a hand, he has a back, he has ears, he has all of these things, eyes, mouth, we know this. I believe he has an intestines, he has all those things that we do within the body because we are made in his image. So I believe that God has the very same thing Jesus ate and all of these different things. God ate and so forth. So God came down and sat down with um, um, Abraham and sat down and had a meal. So uh, uh, we want to understand that we are made in his exact image now the likeness part i believe it's twofold i believe it granted man the spirit but it also gave man the gift of the soul because the bible says after god came and the holy spirit kissed us this mud man became a speaking soul man has a spirit soul and a body and he became a speaking soul. So God's image and likeness, God's likeness is the spirit and soul. And so we know that um, when man died, the spirit uh, um, and the soul part and the body, all of it got corrupted as a result of one man's disobedience, according to Romans. And one man's obedience, the Bible tells us that if we live with faith, and uh, uh, grace, that combination, we shall reign in this life. So we see then that God now begins to put into place this plan that he had, and the plan that he had was to create and, and have a space by which 
man could now exist. So God plans things before the foundation of the earth. He then had to reconstruct the earth after it was damaged. And um, he then puts this man on the planet. And then it says in Genesis 2, after he's done um, finishing everything that he's made, he says that he rested. And so why did God rest it? I believe that God rested in order to give his plan that he had planned before the foundation of the earth, the beginning of time. He introduced time so that he would give his plan permission to accomplish the things that he had set up and ordained before the foundation of the earth. So once he rested, he rested in order to give uh, permission to his declaration, his decrees that he had made uh, to become uh, manifested. Some of them um, manifested immediately, like the earth and and all of the things within it. But then other plans that he had made would be manifested through time, which he introduced in Genesis chapter 1. And so we see then that God is, uh, um, this resting peace was to give him, de- uh, to give his declaration and his decrees that he had set up permission to begin to bring and manifest. And because we know that Jesus Christ was manifested in 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 the correct time because it said so so you and i we have our situation that we were in and we came to a place where we learned to we had to first work up with a plan and then we once we get the plan we would then as we say um, decide it uh, and then we then release the uh, fruit of our decision which will manifest because if we release it by faith and we believe it we have done that then it will manifest. So we see then that God has formed man. He declares that we got to rest sometime. And so what happened in our situation is how do we get to this resting place? And so I want to talk to you guys and walk through some of the aspects in the Bible. And tell. so we are invited, first of all, to come into the rest of God. So let's take a look at when we were first invited according to the Word of God. Uh, We know that the children of Israel were invited to that rest uh, that they had available to them in the wilderness. So there's a rest before you and I while we were in the wilderness that we can afford to have access to because we read it in the scriptures. And we read that they the reason why they did not enter into God's rest was that they were of an evil heart of unbelief. They didn't believe anything God said. So the Holy Spirit said in um, Hebrews chapter 3, he says, So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. And this was after that uh, temptation, which the Bible calls it the day of the great quarrel, as I mentioned in one of the other translations that they read. But let me read verses, um, verse 7 of Hebrews chapter 3. I'm going to pick up from 7, and then I'll read to 11 so you can get the whole context of what is being said by the Holy Spirit. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if you will hear his voice, Harden not your heart as it was in the in the provocation, or the other translation says, or the bitter quarrel. In the day of temptation, in the wilderness, so he's locating, giving you where it is. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. So we know then that the scripture says uh, God has shown his people the work, but he's shown Moses his ways. And so we want to learn about God's ways, not his works, because the Bible tells us that in the last days that uh, when um, uh, the Antichrist comes, he's going to be doing lots of miracles and all of those different things. So we see that it didn't matter anything about the works of God, the people's heart was still evil. And it tells us that they saw it continually for 40 years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation. So the Holy Spirit is saying, Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, the Holy Spirit is now declaring what he said, they do always err in their heart or in their soul, um, and uh, and they have not known my ways, which I have talked to you about. The scripture says there is a difference between God's acts and his ways. And so 
uh, we want to learn his ways. So the Holy Spirit says, um, so I swear in my wrath. So they've made him really upset. He says, they shall not enter into my rest. So that is the context by which that terminology, they shall not enter into my rest. So there is a way that you and I then can enter into the rest of God. There is a way by which we cannot, we can stay out of the um, the rest of God. So let's take a look briefly in verse 12 and see what are the criteria, what are the conditions by which one can um, not enter into the rest of God. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. So we see the example, the way by which you and I uh, will not be able to enter into that uh, realm of the peace of God. But we are called to enter in. We have an invitation to come into the rest of God, and we could see that as well. And um, let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 4, uh, verses 3, 4. We which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter uh if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. So we're looking at this thing, and this is why I, want, I brought, it, brought in the foundation of the world, because I wanted to show you that God had his time uh, in space and in eternity coming up with his plan. We know that Jesus existed. He came in, and then they made a decision as to how they're going to implement this plan. That planning consists also of every one of us. At the time, God was planning things about you and I as well. We saw that in Ephesians. And we know that from the, uh, um, the Bible, it also tells us that God has made plans for you and I. So while he was in eternity, he was planning every single life that was, is out here today. And he has plans for you. For I know the plans that I have made for you. So God was putting all these things. And then after he had decided all these plans, then he needed a place to put you and I so that these plans that he has made up will come to pass into our life. And that is why I wanted to show you guys from eternity's point of view what was happening with God. And there's a lot going on. So he now has en uh, um, called you and I or has given you an opportunity so that you and I can enter into his rest. What does that mean to enter into God's rest? And it says, God rested from all his work to give permission for his plans to work. And I mentioned that to you guys. So you and I have to do the very same thing when we get into the space of uh, God, of coming to rest in God's, um, you know, having his, his rest actually manifest in our life. So here we go. So it tells us that we are called to come in. We have the opportunity to access that rest. The only way we can enter into God's rest is by faith. I just read that to you. So I want to take a look at some of the people who will happen in the Bible. There are stories there. It tells us that we ought to come in and um, rest from what? Rest from our works. So the scripture talks about in uh, Romans that works, man works, that he tries to do to obtain salvation is in, is in vain because God says, it's not by works, it's by faith in me. So we know then that you can't work your way all the way into salvation. You won't be able to work your way into heaven before God because then you can boast. And so God took it away and he created the way by which you and I can get into this, uh, this rest and this kingdom. And that is by faith. So we see, I want to take a look at a couple of people in the scriptures who had, uh, were given the promises of God, you know, and, and, um, uh, or they heard or they lived, they were living in, in the time of God as far as, uh, when Jesus was there, you know, Abraham. I want to take a look at Abraham. And I want to look at some of the things that people do and they never get into the rest of God because they hadn't come to the end of their rope, their ability. They haven't come to the end of their works. And the reason why you and I are still in the mess that we are in is because we haven't come 
to the end of our works. We're still trying to uh, make God's promise happen through our will and our desire. So let's take a look at Genesis chapter 16. We know uh, verses 3 to 8 has a story um, about Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar. Here we see that these three people are about to help God out because God had come to Abraham and Sarah and he says, you guys are going to have a child and um, through this child I'm going to bless you, I'm going to bless you, the nations and so forth. And so God had given them the word. And so they felt that, you know, he was moving in time. Uh, she wasn't getting pregnant, so let's help him out a little. So she came up with a plan. Sarah came up with a plan and says, Hey, um, Abraham, here is my handmaid, uh, Hagar. Why don't you go sleep with her? And when she gets pregnant, we're going to take that kid. And that's the kid that, you know, what God promised us that we were going to have a child. That's going to be the child. So they or working things out for God, if you will, because he wasn't working in their timeline. He wasn't moving as fast as he should, if you will. And so they hatched up this plan. Um, Hagar got pregnant. Uh, she turned on her on Sarah, began to look down on her because she got pregnant, and Sarah's barren, Sarah can't have kids, and brought in a whole slew of mess trauma that you would not believe due to this issue with these folks that have not entered into their rest. They were called to believe God by faith to get this kid. And so they, out of faith, create what we call the Ishmaels in life. And to this very day, the Ishmael and the Jewish nation are enemies. They are fighting to their death because they are family. And there's nothing like family war, guys. I don't care what you talk about. And you're looking at it today with these two nations because these two people, these three, two people actually brought this woman into this plan to try and help God out. So we know that that doesn't work. Another person that didn't come to the end of their rope is, and you've heard me talk about her, the woman with the issue of blood. She hadn't done, she didn't, she was rich and she was doing everything in her power to get what she wanted. Her desired outcome was she was sick at the healthcare of that time. The, the, the industry was there and she was going to those doctors, spending all the, the, her money. And the Bible tells us that this woman uh, was getting worse and she was dying anyway, didn't do any good. But she didn't come to the end of her works. And when she came to the end of her works, something happened. Abraham and Sarah, the Bible says, when they came to the end of their works, when they had come to the place where they realized, it's out of my ability, I need to come into God's rest. And so how do you enter? You enter into by faith. Romans chapter 4 Hebrews chapter 11 tells us that Abraham and Sarah entered into God's rest by faith and they got pregnant. She got pregnant, she had a son, and God began to bless them. The woman with the issue of blood, we know that she came to the end of her rope and she realized that I can get peace after she heard the word. I'm sure she probably heard Jesus Christ was healing before. But she was still caught up within her works. And so when you and I are caught up within the works, we don't, fo we don't focus on the word of God. We fo focus on our ability. We know that the prodigal son, he also, um, he, his focus was on his wealth and his money and his, his inheritance. His father gave it to him and he went out and he partied. And we know that his lifestyle, based on how he was, he got broke. Next thing we see that this young man was eating with the pigs. And so he had come to the end of his ability, if you will. And then it was right there. I, I always say to people, sometimes many of us need to go sit down with the pigs so that we can get our revelation. And it is right there that this young man got the revelation about his father's house. And so... That father, where, what was the posture of that father all the day long that this child was out partying? His father was still looking for him and come out every day looking for him. His father, and that's your father. 
That is who he is. He wants to know he's looking for you. And he has sent out the invitation. So when this prodigal son got to the end of his ability, he had a revelation that there's some rest over at my father's house. And I need to enter into it. What did he do? By faith, that young man got up and began his journey towards his father's house. And the Bible tells us that this father was waiting for him. The woman with the issue of blood, she walked in after she was able now. She came to the space where she was out of all her ability and she walked in by faith because the Bible tells us that we enter in by faith. It says in Hebrews chapter 4, for we which have believed do enter into rest as he said. And so I want to encourage you guys and let you know that the only way we can get into the rest of God is by faith. You can't get it by what you have to do and earn it and so forth because God is, how it's set up is not, you can't get there unless you get there by faith. So now let's take a look at this rest and what does it look like um, when you are there. And I'll tell you one thing, that when you are there in the rest of God, you know it and you know when you're out of it as well. Because it is that stark of a difference that you can identify within yourself ASAP when you are in and when you're out. We know that Peter was in God's rest while he was obedient to the Word, focused on the Word. He was looking to Jesus Christ. And we know that when Peter took his eyes off of the Word and began to focus on the, his surroundings, that he came out of God's rest and he immediately sank and he was about to die. And that is what I said to you, when you and I are out of God's will, it tells us anything out of faith, you shall surely die. And so Peter was on his way down, but we have a beautiful God who loves us. And it says, immediately, Jesus reached out and grabbed. And so I want to let you guys know that we can only get there by faith. So let's take a look and see what the rest of God looks like. Okay? Number one, we mentioned Peter that you, when you are resting in God, you don't notice your surroundings. You are not focused on what is happening around you. We know this with Sarah and Abraham when they were in the rest of God. It says, for Abraham considered not his body now dead, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. They did not consider it because they were in peace, that rest of God, that rest where God took is to give permission for all those things that you had prayed for to release them, which you did by faith, that resting place. You have now given it permission to go and manifest. And because, again, you, it didn't show up in your timeline, you get out of faith, you come out of your rest, and you start walking into unbelief. I've done a study about the different enemies of our faith. Those enemies of our faith are those tools that the enemy uses to pull you and I out of the rest of God, that peace that we are there. So let's take a look and see what, it, what we learn. What do we learn when we are in that space with the rest of God? We learn how to wait. The scripture tells us in Psalms, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So you and I, if you take a look at the Psalms, there's so many Psalms about learning, about waiting on God. So when you are there in this space of God's rest, you are surrendered to your ability, you have surrendered to your works, there's nothing you can do, and you are then residing and you're believing God to work and bring it up on his timeline because he was the one that introduced it into this world and he brought you and I in there and he always does things in the fullness of time. But our requirement is to maintain and stay within that space of God's rest. What else do we see there? Trust. We have surrendered our ability and we are now lose, losing everything into God and we're allowing Him and trusting Him. We're trusting His timing. We're trusting His pace. We're trusting how He does it, because you and I already have a way how it should be done. So we're trusting Him to do it His time, His way, and we have released ourselves out of it. What are we learning when we're in that space of rest? We're learning about 
humility. We are now looking to God for everything, for our strength, for our wisdom. We see the um, we see who we are, and as we see who we are, we realize that we have to rely rely more on God. So we are learning of who we are about our humility. We are learning about all of the different aspects of who we are as we begin to rest. We're learning how to be hopeful. We know that God's Word brings hopefulness in a hope, uh, a hopeless situation. When we look at our situation, we see nothing. The Bible says that hope is an earnest expectation like we uh, believe it's absolutely going to happen. And so this is what we are learning in that space of rest. Uh, we know that uh, the Bible tells us that we are beginning in that space of rest. We learn how to be thankful, enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. So we learn how to be thankful for what he has done for us before the foundation of the earth. We began to study those things that he made us righteous, that he forgave us, that we have made peace with him. So we began to learn about who he is and we began to be grateful. We understand of his faithfulness, we began to understand of his mercies, we began to understand more of his grace. We began to understand these things. And as we began to understand these things about him, we get to another space by which we have worship. We then begin to worship God in this space of rest where we have extracted our works out of it. And we are now in a space by which we can worship God and lift our eyes and our hands up to him and declare who he is and his love for us. We then walk into his peace. We are engulfed with the peace of God as we are in this space of God's rest and nothing outside because when you're peaceful with God, the outside trauma, the outside war, um, uh, storms that Peter finally, after a while, being in this peace of God and this rest, he looks outside and he began to sink. So when you are here in this space, that is called the rest of God. He is entered in by faith. You come out when you begin to look around and begin to look into the other realm, the other possibilities. But if you focus on God, for with God, all things are possible. Outside of God, there is limitation. But with God, all things are possible. There is no limitation with God. And so I want to challenge you, my brothers and sisters. The reason why you haven't got what you wanted from God is because you have not surrendered in with your works. You are still trying. You're still looking other places. Jesus Christ had to come to a place to surrender his works. He's in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's sweating blood. And he's like, I don't want to do this, man. I know we talked about this before the foundation of the earth, but I, I don't want to do this. And I believe it's not the fact that of him dying on the cross and the shame and the beating and all of those things. I believe he wanted to do that. That's why he volunteered. He said, I'll do it, Father. I'll come and be that sacrifice whereby we can redeem them back to us. I don't believe that it was that, that why he was sweating. I absolutely 100% believe is because of his separation from his father. He's like, I don't know if I can handle that. I don't even know what that feels like because we've been together before the foundation of the earth. We've been together from eternity, and I don't know what that feels like to be separated from you. And when he finally got up there and he began to feel the Father move away as Jesus became sin, and the Bible tells us that God cannot look on sin, Jesus became sin, and the Father turned away. And the reason uh, he, when that happened to him, Jesus cries out. And that cry must have been one of the most dreadful noise that people would hear coming from a human being. Father, Father, why has thou forsaken me? Jesus had never known that until that day. That is why I say to you, those that are traumatized because of family and separation and being abandoned and all of those things, Jesus knows exactly how you feel. Go to him. He will be able to comfort you. The Bible tells us that, that he did that so that 
the, it calls him the captain of our salvation. He ma- he was made perfect through his suffering so that he can be a uh, part for us. And I did a study about that recently in one of the podcasts or in that him he himself had suffered being tempted. He is able to secure them that are tempted. He is able to uh, identify. He's able to be and feel it and understand it. So you and I are called to enter into God's work. In that space is where we get our victory. In that space is where we get all of our joy, all of our needs met. Outside of that, we shall surely die because the scripture says, outside of faith is sin. We saw what happened with our forefathers in Adam. Outside of faith, God was saying, outside of faith, Adam, you shall surely die. And he uh, lost that temptation. Jesus Christ, inside of faith, was able to defeat the enemy. And he showed us how to do so. I want to encourage all of you guys. As the scripture says, we are called to enter into the rest of God. I want you guys, the scripture says, labor to get there. And what does that mean? It means that you make sure that you stay within your faith. And it is a cost because you, there's the noise is so loud. It causes, it needs, you need focus. Labor to begin to focus. As you focus your faith, it will manifest the things that you're asking for. As Peter walked on the water, he was focused on Jesus Christ. He focused on faith until he began to look around. Abraham was not weak in faith. What happened to him? He was giving glory unto God, and as he began to give glory to God, the Bible tells us that he began to uh, notice a couple of things. He said God is able to do what he said he was going to do. But before that, it tells us that Abraham considered not his body now dead, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not look into the natural. He did not look at the noise. He didn't listen to it. But he focused on his faith about what they needed to do in order to bring forth that child. The woman with the issue of blood, she stopped spending her money and then she began to focus her faith into getting to Jesus Christ because she knew that that's where her healing was. And she put out the noise and she began to crawl and scratch and claw to get there because it tells us she was going against the crowd. And she didn't want to do anything but to touch his hem of his garment. Why? Because she said, I don't need... That's what she had came, the decision that she had made within herself. Once she decided, she decreed that, and then she took off to get it done. Jarius did the same thing. He, her daughter was, his daughter was sick. She, he took off and he came to Jesus Christ and he was hunting him and he got to his audience. And Jesus, when his men, when Jairus' people came and tell Jesus, don't trouble the master, she's dead. Jesus looks at him and says, Jairus, don't you move, don't unhook your faith, don't listen to these people, don't switch, stay focused on me. Do not allow the noise from the outside to interrupt your focus. Your focus is that if I come and touch your daughter, she will be made whole. Stay there. Do not listen to what the servants say and disconnect you. The centurion soldier said to Jesus, I, my servant is sick. He sent his people to it. He asked, do you want, do you need me to come there? He says, no, I don't need you here. I have a revelation about what authority means. And I recognize that you are a man of authority. I just need you to speak the word. And so Jesus looks and says, wow, I've never seen anything like this before. And so Jesus said, okay, it's, uh, it's done. And so you need to be focused so that you can stay in the rest of God. And when you are in that space of God's rest, God will take care of everything for you. For with God, in your space of rest, with God, all things are possible. But with man, no, there's limitation there. But with God, there is no limitation. Do not limit God by looking around your situation. Stay focused on the impossible. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. You walk by faith, not by sight.